Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and somewhat early, <laughs> though still not on time, for my card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. Sorry, my voice is still a little off. This cold is just taking the life out of me. So anyway, I am using the new, or new to me, Neat and Tangled Qualifications stamp set that I showed in my last haul video. I absolutely had to use it. This is like the cutest little you know, koala image ever. So I'm using my mini Misty and stamping it um, onto some Nina 80 pound classic crest solar white cardstock. I'm using um, MFT's extreme black ink for this. And I use my Misty because I wanted to double stamp the image just because of the, his solid nose. But really in the end, if you didn't have a stamp position, you could fill in his nose with like black Nouveau drops if it didn't stamp like really black. But I wanted to double stamp everything, so I did that, and I did the same with the sentiment. All of the little sentiments in this set are curved to fit the little banner he's holding, which I just love. So, of course, I used the qualified to be my <laughs> Valentine sentiment. I'm still making some Valentine cards, even though it's next week. Um, this one, though, has other sentiments in it, too, so it's not strictly a Valentine's Day set, which is really nice. So before I started coloring, I actually Googled, I just Googled cartoon koalas <laughs> just to kind of get an idea of where I wanted to place the color in that. And basically they've got like a white, like the insides of their ears are more kind of white or light gray and around like, you know, the front of their face and their little tummies. So I just left those areas and didn't add the darkest marker here. Still doing my, you know, darkest to lightest and blending everything out. And those areas that I want lighter, I didn't add the darker colors. I just added a little bit of the C4. And then I'm going to add mostly like the C2 and the 0 to those areas just to keep them lighter to give it that little extra bit of definition. I've seen some other designers um, really go all out and they add, you know, like little flicks with either markers or you could use colored pencils to give it, you know, the texture of the fur and that. I did think about that, but in the end I just didn't have the time and decided just to keep this more simple. So I just colored in his whole little body and at the end here I'm just using that C0 as my lightest just to blend in those areas. And then I'm using pinks for the banner. Um, this week's color throwdown challenge is obviously perfect for Valentine's. It's red, pink, and gray. That's also why I chose this image. I was like, perfect. <laughs> so for the banner I'm using pinks and again just working darkest to lightest. Really, this whole thing was just really simple. So added in all of my color and then for the hearts I'm using my just my go-to red combo which is R29 and R24. So adding my R29 and then I'm going to blend that out with the R24. Really simple. And then after I did that I pulled out my white gel pen and I'm just adding highlights. I mentioned this in a previous video. A lot of people ask me about that. I get emails about doing a video on where I add highlights. Honestly, I don't follow the real chat. Generally, you would add the highlights where the, you know, light source is. But you can see I added over the top of his head where the darkest coloring is. I just add them where I think they're gonna look the best. I don't really think about it too much. I just kind of add them in because I just really like how that white gel pen really pops and it just gives it that extra something. So I went along and just added the little highlights and then I added them to the hearts and to the top areas of the banner. And then once I was happy with that, I'm going to use the coordinating dies. There's just the outline die for the qual, and then there's a little heart die. So I have to run the hearts through multiple times to die cut all of them. So I'm going to tape those in place with a bit of washi tape. And then after I have those die cut, for my background, I pulled out some Bristol Smooth cardstock. I have my tonic um, craft mat here. So I've pulled that out. I'm going to lay that out, and then I'm going to um, use a little bit of painter's tape to adhere the um, Neat and Tangled Radiating Star Stencil. And this cardstock I had cut, it was just a large scrap I had, so it's slightly larger than an A2 card front. So I'm just taping the stencil into place with some painter's tape right onto my craft mat here, which in the end was kind of redundant and I didn't need to use because I'm not like actually inking off anything. But it's kind of getting habit now to use this more because this mat doesn't go anywhere because it has that silicone backing to it so it's not sliding all over the place so I just enjoy using it but looking back it was like I didn't even really need to use it this time <laughs> but anyway 
I'm using oxide inks to sponge and I started with worn lipstick in the center but it wasn't quite the right shade of pink so I actually went over it very lightly with picked raspberry oxide ink and then I added some candied ac candied apple oxide ink so just sponge those on and then I wanted to add a little bit of splatter so I'm just smushing the worn lipstick and the picked raspberry ink just onto an acrylic block and this is where I could use a craft mat because I'm not going to flick off the acrylic block. I'm just mixing those together with water. And then I'm just going to tap that brush against my finger. Um, it creates a more rounded splatter, if that makes any sense. When you flick it off the block, sometimes you can actually see the splatter, like the direction of the splatter. If that doesn't make sense, no biggie. Um, it just kind of depends sometimes the look I'm going for. So I just tap this multiple times against my finger just to create a little bit of splatter. And I did use my heat tool to kind of dry it and I didn't dry it enough because yeah, I ended up getting like it everywhere. When you're doing things like splatter and whatnot with the oxides because you've added water to them, they take a lot longer to dry. As it is, they do take a bit longer to dry because they are, um, they have that pigment quality to them. So just an FYI, make sure to let things like splatter with the oxides really dry or really make sure they're heat set with your heat tool. So I'd set that aside and then my card base is some gray cardstock and um, A2 size card and I put it back into my Misty here so I could stamp the sentiments and these are from the Love Notes stamp set by Neat and Tangled. And this large love stamp, I had stamped it with the worn lipstick oxide ink and then I inked it up without even cleaning it off with that picked raspberry ink just to get it more to the similar shade of pink that I was going for. And then remove that and then I'm using the large U stamp from the set and just inking it up with that same black ink. And then finally inking up the little heart from the set with the candied apple oxide ink. I love how oxides look on darker cardstock. So got all that done. And then I'm going to adhere this. I die cut the sponged um, stenciled cardstock with one of the MFT A2 stitch rectangle stacks set to dies. <laughs> and then I die cut a larger piece of pink cardstock with one of the larger dies. And then I adhered it and had to wipe off like those. The splatter was still getting everywhere. So... I smeared a little bit of it, but I'm going to fix that. So I backed that piece with um, Simon Says, the Big Mama foam tape roll, just to give it that little bit of dimension. And then I adhered the Koala with regular 3M foam tape because I wanted it popped up more. And then I'm going to adhere one of the hearts directly over that smear so nobody can see it. <laughs> and I'm just using Simon's Craft Tacky Glue to adhere the hearts. So I adhered three of them to the outside, a couple of them on the inside. I had lost one of them on my desk because I had done six altogether, but I didn't worry about it. I only adhered the two to the inside and then, yeah, still not exactly sure where that other one ended up. It just got lost in the mess. So I adhered those stamped and die cut hearts to the inside of the card. And then as a final um, bit of embellishment, I pulled out the Studio Katia Cupid's Kiss crystals that I'm just obsessed with and wanting to add to everything lately. So I used quite a few of them on this card. Put them in my little magical bead tray that again, I showed in my last haul video. I'm really liking these trays. They're, it's a very underwhelming thing when you get it, but when you actually start using it, it's convenient. I like them. So use that to kind of shake up the be the rhinestones to get them, you know, right side up and then sprinkle them rather liberally on my card. And I'm using this craft tacky glue again to adhere all of these to my card front, just picking them up with my jewel picker and then pressing them into place. And really quick and easy to do with this adhesive and the jewel picker. And then I was going to leave it at that. But as I was doing this, I kept looking at the koala and I was like, his nose needs to be shiny. It just, it needs to be done. So I pulled out my glossy accents and completely coated his nose. I was going to just dab glossy accents on his eyes, but I keep my black glaze pen right at the top of my desk, like right off camera here. I just keep it in, um, in hand at all times. So I use my black glaze pen just to dot his eyes. You don't see it as much on camera, but in real life it does give it that really deep black, like glazed look. And then as a final touch, I also added the glossy accents to the hearts just to give them that glaze and that shine. And that finished off my card. So as always, I will have a link below the video in the description box below. There'll be a link to my blog post. There'll be links to all the supplies used. I'll link to the color challenge. All that info will be in my blog post linked below the video. So you can check that out if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one.
Bye.